Hi. Welcome to Sunday Coffee Chat with Sarah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. Uh, what's today? We're two days in that Aquarius lunar cycle energy. So Aquarius, happy Aquarius new moon a few days after. Um, let's see here. Uh, happy lunar new year. It's the year of the wood dragon. And that's exciting. Who doesn't like dragon energy? Hello. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome in. Today on this edition of the coffee chat, we are going to talk about the soul's purpose. Soul's purpose is what we're going to talk about here today. I wrote notes so I wouldn't forget my the things that were stewing in my brain about this. That's what we're going to talk about. But first, I want to invite you. We're going to take the first few minutes of this coffee chat as I will be doing uh, every now and then. Debbie, I see you down there, Bonita, D Bonita Domingo. I, this year, I'm getting, I'm on a tangent. I'm trying to learn, uh, I'm, well, upping my Spanish speaking game this year. So that is on my goals list. Um, you know, if I hearken way back <laughs> to my high school years, I did take four years of the uh, honors advanced level Spanish all through high school. And so my ability to ask people to slow down and like really listen or kind of make my way through like signs and reading material. It's iffy at best, but I think I'm better than, than some others <laughs> might be. And so this year I really want to reinvigorate my Spanish speaking um, because we're looking to maybe spend some time in Mexico next year. So uh, that's anyway, thank you, Debbie. You just took me down a road, but that is one of the things I am working on this year. Okay. So again, we're going to talk about soul's purpose today, but first we're going to spend a little bit of time diving into the week ahead because I am very passionate about being time intentional. We of course have our lunar planner that I, I encourage if you don't use our lunar planner, you totally don't have to do that, but I encourage everybody to think about their week ahead and what is happening for them. So take a check in with yourself right at this moment and consider uh, these questions I ask all the time. How did how do you want to feel this year? How do you want to feel this lunar cycle? Feelings, not I don't want to know exactly what you want to do, your goals. I want to know how you want to feel. How do you want to feel in the year of 2024? <laughs> how do you want to feel this lunar cycle? And then when you take those two things, uh, wind them down. How do you want to feel in this next week ahead? How do you want to feel in this week ahead? And then that's where we're going to start. So think about that for a second. Cue thinking time. <laughs> next, I do invite you if you're, if I keep doing these Sunday chats, you could totally bring your planner and do this, you know, live with me. And I want you to consider everything you have to do in the next week, not your to-do list. I want you to think about the things that have times where they have to be done. So for example, if you work outside, if you work, like your work hours would go on there. If you have to, if you already know you have appointments of some sort or um, commitments, all of that is going to go on your calendar. So you, you ask yourself, how do I want to feel this year? Come back to your, your overarching intention. How do you want to feel this lunar cycle? We work with lunar cycles because they have built in rhythms for us. They call us back to emotion and feeling and intention and presence. We're in this new moon right now. Perfect time to say, how do I want to feel over the next 28 to 30 days, this lunar cycle? And then knowing both of those things, how do you want to feel this week? It could be one of the same words. It could be an extension. Maybe you need to adjust something in order to feel the way you want to feel. Uh, and maybe something, maybe it's just very specific. So for example, for me right now, um, in my life, I'm a space holder for a lot of people. I tend to be the emotional rock in my household. And this week I'm feeling very much like I need the space to, like, I feel like I'm not holding. <laughs> so I want to feel maybe 
wait lists this week. And so then I can look at my calendar, put in everything I have to do, everything that has dates, times, everything that has dates and times to it. I've already done this. They're in my lunar calendar and they're also in my digital calendar. If you listen every week, you'll hear me say every week that if I didn't use my digital calendar, I would be an an utter disaster. <laughs> I have to use my digital calendar. So I write them down to have the experience of activating my brain and my memory in that way. Also connecting to what I'm writing with my hand. You can think of like journaling when you're writing down, you are more in tune to that experience than if you're just typing. So I write it down, go to my digital calendar, put everything in there. I see that I have time commitments somewhere I have to be every day this week, but Friday and Saturday. So I know I want to feel like ah, this sort of breath. And it's looking like I likely won't have the opportunity for that until Friday. Now I can do some inner reflection while I'm planning here and say, I think I need that before Friday, <laughs> which means I need to look here and see how am I going to make that happen for myself? How am I going to set myself up for success? Or do I need to shift my expectation where I'm feeling an immediate need for something for myself, but also seeing that it's not going to happen till Friday? So do I have to, how do I support myself then, right? And this is how we start to be more in alignment with how we want to feel, better able to maintain our inner peace no matter what's going on around us and readjust our expectations, which actually ties into the soul's purpose. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that in a minute here. So for me, in my modeling for you, as I think to my week ahead, I have a couple things I could adjust. I could try to clear some time tomorrow for this space to allow myself to breathe, or I can say to myself, all right, I know that's coming on Friday. So what do I need to do to help manage my energy through this week? Does that mean that I want to do some of the tools that we talk about here? Do I want to create a special um, like tea or tincture that I want to drink all week long, or remind me of this uh, thing that I'm looking forward to? Do I want to grab some crystals, set myself up like a nice little crystal space here on my desk? Cause I'll be sitting at my desk every day this week. So I can focus on that and remember that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. What do I need to do to support myself? If I can't adjust my schedule to adjust my needs, my emotional needs, how I want to feel this week. And this is how we start to be conscious creators of our energy and conscious creators of our lives. When we don't pause to have these experiences and say, how do I want to feel? And then look at our calendars, which often end up dictating how we feel because of the things we have to do, the people that we have to spend time with, even your loved ones, like the people you want to spend time with. If you live with them, you also have to spend time with them, <laughs> even if you don't necessarily want to, because you might live under the same roof, right? Right. Uh, like, don't get me wrong. I love my kids. I love my husband. And sometimes I don't want to spend time with them yet. We live under the same roof and they are my chosen family and it is what it is. And so we've got to say, how do I consciously create the atmosphere or what do I need to do to balance my internal energy so that the way life is this week doesn't take me off of, out of my peace, out of my energy, out of my point of neutrality so that I can continue to consciously create the life I desire to be living. And this is one of the ways we do it is by creating this ritual every week of looking to the week ahead and asking ourselves these questions. What do I need? How do I get that on the calendar? And if it's not able to be put on there, what do I do to support myself in the interim? Because the truth is, is sometimes there's things we just can't control, right? There's just stuff that happens and we have to, we live in a world with other people and we just have to show up in that way. Uh, and so we can ask ourselves these questions and that's all part of a weekly ritual to plan for your week ahead. I think when I say plan for your week ahead, if I just said that in a vacuum, you might hear things like planners and calendars and to-do lists and all everything that we all feel can feel is overwhelming. Notice I still have not gone through like a to-do list. I just started with what do I actually have to do because there's a time commitment involved and then how do I want to feel? I started there. <laughs> and now if I had the capacity and the bandwidth, I would go to that to-do list and I would say, well, what do I need to do? Well, I need to clean this one section of my basement. There's like all these boxes 
I got two old cats. It's not a good scene. They all need to come out of the basement and um, like be thrown away. That's very urgent to do. Yet, I know that my emotional capacity to deal with that is just not there right now. So I'm not even bringing that to the table today. Perhaps later this week, if I have an emotional shift, I'll feel like I have the energy to even discuss that. But today for me, I'm not even going through a brain dump of things I need to do, want to do, should do. It's just like, what do I have to do? <laughs> and how do I just just focus on that until I feel like I have some breathing room? And that's what I'm doing. So start with, again, your what do you have to do time commitments? How do you want to feel? How is that looking in terms of your time commitments? And then if there is space and energy, what's all this stuff on your to-do list that you would love to do or that you feel like you should do, whether it's stuff for fun or the to-dos of life, that's when we start to put all of that in. All right. I love that everyone's sharing in the comments about how you have been feeling, how you want to feel and taking steps to feel that way. And, uh, you know, getting back to that, that place. Um, like for me, one of the things I'm feeling, uh, very like my energy is just high. Both of my kids are, uh, have different neurodiversities. And one of my children is extremely combative. It's not something I talk about a lot. Um, but one of my kids is extremely combative and it's an inner, nervous system regulation brain thing, right? It's like, it's not, he's not trying to just not listen. It's how he, it's his wiring and he's, oh, he, and now I'm saying he is, you know, which kid, <laughs> but that kid, my, my son, he's very, very combative and it's very challenging. And it really like these last few days were different for him with activities and it's been really hard. So I'm kind of anything I have to do, putting on pause, regrouping myself, um, looking back at my own resources that I have in terms of communication and positive parenting and just trying to retool myself. So that's priority for me this week is making sure that's on here because how I want to feel is very much impacted by my family right now. And it's challenging to feel the way I want to feel. So I'm just kind of like, okay, wipe everything away. How do I support myself and feeling the way I want to feel? And so that might be the case for some of you. Some of you are feeling great. And so you're going to put on your to-do list, like this is the week I'm cleaning my closet. This is the week I'm cleaning the fridge. <laughs> and if that's where you are, get it on there, you know, put all of that on there. All right, let's see here. Um, yeah, I know, and I know so many of you can, uh, can relate to just the emotional things of other people. And it's, it's a challenge. So I see you, you're not alone out there. It's, I am trained actually in that very thing. It's what I did before sisters enchanted and man, I am being impressed to the limits of what I know and how to use my tools. <laughs> I'm like, Oh gosh, I'm a carpenter who's lost their hammer. That's what I feel like. All right. We got our planning done for this week, or at least started it, or I prompted you to come back to it after this and think about it for yourself. So I really encourage you to take some time to look at your week ahead and get everything in order for yourself. A lack of clarity leads to chaos. So we want clarity on how you're spending your time, why you're spending it that way, and what you're doing to help you feel the way you want to feel in your life. All right. Speaking of clarity, our hot topic for today is the soul's purpose. Soul's purpose. One of the uh, sorts of things I hear in one way or another from people um, just over the years and pretty consistently is wanting to know what their soul's purpose is. Like, I want to know what's my soul's purpose. What am I here to do? What, how do you find your soul's purpose? And that's what we're going to talk about. All right. That's where I'm going to move my notes so I can read them. No, I'm going to put them right back where they were. My microphone's not in the right spot there. All sorted. Let's start with the word soul. When I tell you, say the word soul to you, what do we think about with the word soul? Your soul is not something you can hold, right? Like you can see my body. You cannot see some of you, some of you out there <laughs> really in tune psychic people. Some of us might feel like we can see the soul of people, like we feel it energetically, but we can't, we can't take it and put it on a table, right? And say like, here's your soul on the table. Here's your soul on the table. Soul is an essence. It's ethereal. It is an, an like something that we we can maybe embody it, but it's not something you can take and you can put out. 
And when we say, oh, I can see this person's soul, I can see their energy. What we're seeing is we use the word see, I think it's, it's the best word we have to describe it. But we're, see, we're seeing, we're sensing their essence, we're, 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 we're sensing their, like the, the beauty between the lines that aren't the things that we can like touch, right? That is our soul. It's ethereal. It's an essence. The soul is, uh, it's an unconditional love energy. When we talk about the soul and I don't know, is this, is this all perspective? Is it opinion? Is it theory? I don't know what it is, but when it comes to the soul, I think at its core, a, an essence, a soul is unconditional love. It's a neutral energy. And I think it's our, it's our human brains then that add emotion to the soul, that add experience to the soul. The soul itself, I think, from what I know in my experiences, again, maybe it's different for you. This isn't one of those things where I'm going to say this is like, this is it. <laughs> this, this is just experience here. It's a, it's an unconditional neutral energy. And then we bring experience to it. So if we're thinking of soul's purpose, start with that. Understand that it's the soul isn't something that I think necessarily has one purpose, right? Because it's in and of it, I think it's innately pretty neutral and it's innately full of unconditional love and just kind of is and experiences. And then when we think of the word purpose, if we're thinking of soul's purpose, I actually looked up the definition of purpose for this. And I got two here. Um, one, the reason something is done or why it exists. So the reason something is done or why it exists or have as one's intention. You better believe I love that. Have as one, have as one's intention or objective. So when we think of soul's purpose and we really take the language and look at it um, specifically, we have this ethereal, ethereal energy that's just kind of here to see what happens. And then we have purpose, which is the reason why something exists or the intention for it. So I think that folks look for what is my soul's purpose? What is it that I meant to do? What am I supposed to show up as in this life? Because we're looking for some sense of um, security and uh, some sense of like assurance. <laughs> we're on the right path and we're making the right choices. And I think that that's actually very counter to what a soul is. A soul, again, it's not something you can put on a table and say, look at this beautiful, like red vase. It's so red and beautiful and tall and like describe it. It is an essence. And can you really, can you really describe an essence in one exact way? You can't because I would say the essence of something, I might describe it in all kinds of different words than somebody else would. There's not like a black and white, this is what it is. So when we think of a soul's purpose, I think the more we look for our soul's purpose, the farther we can actually get from it because we're so busy looking for the right thing. And so if we're saying, well, I want to know my soul's purpose. I want to know what I'm here for. I want to know what I'm supposed to do. I feel like there's something meant for me, but I don't know what it is. I would say that the first place to start would be looking at a daily life and just asking, well, what stuff feels really like I don't want to be doing it? <laughs> like what feels really not intentional? What are some of these words here? Like you don't even know why you're doing it. Why are, why are you having to do it? Why are you doing this? Or like you can't name a reason besides something practical for it. So for example, um, we were having a discussion the other day with one of our community groups and it was around the things that we value. And one of the people, so if she's watching this, you know, you know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> As some of you will know who I'm talking about, but uh, she mentioned that she values work because it gives her money to do the thing that she loves. Right. So then I said, well, what if we reframe that so that the thing you love is the thing you value and now you work right to make it so you can do the thing that you love. And I think we can say things like, oh, well, I work because I need money. Like that's the purpose. 
But if it's not just something that's like some practical, I have to do it because I have to do it. What is the real reason? <laughs> what is the real reason that you're doing it? Because we like, you know, we live in the world we live in. So I'm using, I'm writing the work example here. I know not everybody here. Um, some of y'all are retired. Some of y'all are stay at home people. I'm just, this is an example. So apply it to your life as you will. But we need money to live in the world that we live in. And so all of us can say, well, why do I work? I need money, right? And though you do have choice and agency and the type of thing you do for work. So if you wanted to align that and find a job that fills you up, find a job that makes you feel alive, that's where we start to ask these questions. Well, what's the reason I want to do this? Is it just because I need money? Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's why you're doing it. And that's that's fine. Like, that's fair. And though, if you're making choices constantly just because it's the thing you have to do and not stopping to say, why am I making the choice? What is the purpose here? I think that's where we distance ourselves from this, this feeling like we're doing things on purpose, that we're doing things that are in alignment with a soul's purpose. Um, so for myself, as an example, I love what I do here. The exact thing, though, of, of leading the Sisters Enchanted, leading these communities, that's the container for the essence. What I do is I help people have confidence in themselves. I help people to see things from new perspectives. That's something I've been doing my entire life, not just in the container of the Sisters Enchanted. So I can say, well, what's the essence of what I do that I do again and again and again that I feel great doing it and I know that I'm contributing and it lights me up and I have no end of energy for it. And for me, that's always been really taking somebody who is like, all they can see is the four walls around them and helping them find the door out of the room. I've always done that. I've done it since I was a young kid. I did it when I was in college. I did it even without realizing I was doing it. That's what I've done. And so then when I can put myself in containers that allow me to do that, I feel fulfilled. I feel like I am on purpose in my life. My soul's purpose is not the sisters enchanted. My soul's purpose is the thing that I'm doing within the container. And I think that we can look for, tell me what I'm supposed to do. Tell me <laughs> what I'm supposed to do for work. Tell me like, whether or not I'm supposed to make these decisions and what is my soul's purpose. So I would ask you when we think of soul's purpose is really start to look at what do you do that feels like you have endless energy for it? What do you do that feels like you could just roll out of bed and you're like, this is the essence of what I feel comfortable doing. I feel like my I just feel like me when I do it. I don't have to overthink it. I don't have to, I don't have to find the steps. I don't need somebody to tell me I'm doing it right. It's my essence. It is my way of moving through the world. That is whatever that is, is your soul's purpose in the container though. That's what we're looking for the truth on, right? Like we're looking for somebody to tell us that that's the right container for it. And you only figure out the right container by finding all the wrong containers. <laughs> so you ask yourself, do I love, like, what about this am I not loving? What about this isn't the right fit for me right now? You know, um, in my previous, what I did before this, I worked with a lot of kids and adults um, with learning differences. And I found it wasn't my preferred container for this kind of work because the, I just was, I'd get this like rage in me about <laughs> kids who weren't being served at their highest. And then, um, like I was not great at setting boundaries with my clients. So I'd have parents showing up on my, I remember one Memorial day, I had had like a couple cocktails and a parent showed up at my doorstep because I wasn't answering their emails, like with paperwork for their kid on Memorial day. And I was like, this is not, I need to learn boundary setting. <laughs> <laughs> and so that container at the time did not work for me. That container now, I'm a different person. That might be different. That container did not work for me then though, right? But that same essence, helping people see outside their four walls and find the door to an another more open landscape. That's what I did then. That's what I do now. Different container. Um, and you only find the containers through trying different ones and asking yourself, what am I what part of this doesn't fit for me? What, and you might not know that right away either. That's kind of trial and error, right? 
So what are some of the reasons that we find, what are some of the reasons that we just continuously come up to barriers around this? And I've started, I've already talked about some of them here. Like I've, I've bridged that conversation gap for us. Um, but some of these barriers around really knowing what this is for you and trusting that 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 thing is there for you to access. I think one of the biggest ones is lack of confidence, feeling like that it doesn't, that you, there's lack of confidence. So if you say that my, I feel like my essence, my, my soul essence is X, Y, and Z, uh, lacking a confidence and just stating that for even to yourself, let alone other people. So a lack of confidence and following through or following that line of thought, uh, emotional extremes, emotional extremes. I think that when we find ourselves um, on either send, end of an emotional spectrum, we, that's not a soul energy, soul energy. In my, again, this is part of, this is some opinion here. I think that's a very neutral energy. I think that it's our human selves and our thoughts that bring us into all these emotional extremes. And our soul is just like, Hmm. <laughs> the universe, <laughs> unconditional love, let's be neutral. So when we're in these emotional extremes, I think that's when we're most looking for answers. When we're really joyous and happy and like over exhilarated, we want more of that. And I think that's when we can start chasing more high feelings and lose sight of like, of the other parts of life. When we're very like, down and out and somebody please help me solve my problems. Then we try to find something that's a solution where understanding and identifying your inner essence, your energy, your ethereal state of being really comes from non-attachment to these other emotions, which is really challenging for us as people. Like it's very challenging for all of us as people. That's not if you're like, oh gosh, that's me. Um, that's not just you. That's all of us. I think decision overwhelm. And that's this container bit seeing like, well, I can do this thing in a hundred different containers. Like I see, um, let's hear Beth is saying love to learn and craft, but I have to do all the muggle stuff. So, so Beth, if like, if projects of creativity, if using your hands, if that was your, your essence, and that's the thing that you just like, you help people feel better through that. You feel better through it. You contribute the work to the world through it. If that's your go-to and Beth, I'm using you just as an example. So just your, this isn't about Beth. This is Beth's <laughs> line as an example. What becomes then challenging is the vast array of ways you can do that. Like a person who loves to do those kinds of things, you can be an art teacher you can be an art therapist, you could be an artist, you could work in um, product development for a crafting company, you could work retail and crafts, you could be a fabric designer, like, it just becomes endless, endless decisions and ideas. So the decision overwhelm with deciding the container, I think can keep us away from stepping into our soul's purpose or what feels like a soul's purpose, because we just don't know what choice to make. And we're afraid to get it wrong. Um, I think that other barriers, people who tell you things about yourself from a young age, uh, obviously I care about this. I wrote a whole book about it, but if people who tell you things about you from a young age and you internalize it as truth and never take, never realize that actually that's probably not true. Somebody else just said that to me and then I thought it was true forever. So we separate ourselves from these inter internal geniuses that we're born with because we're all born with some kind of genius. That's the magic you were born with. And then somewhere along the line, maybe someone said something and you're just like, oh gosh, that's ridiculous. Why would I do that? Or I can't do that. And then you just believe that is true and make decisions based on it. So many of us focus on our weaknesses and trying to make our weaknesses stronger, which I think can take us away from our strengths and that genius. And then also just expectation, expectation of how life should look how life should feel, how things should be easier, or if things are really easy, that maybe they should be harder and this is too easy and too good to be true, right? So we have all of these barriers that come up that I think make it more challenging for a person to truly understand their purpose. So we can call it the soul's purpose or just your purpose, but truly challenging to understand what is your, your most neutral self? What is your essence? What can you, what, what is the thing that you come back to again and again and again? And then how, what's the container for it for you right now? And also knowing that, that the container can change over time. Um, I've done what I do to help people or just how I interact with the world 
through like 20 different vessels. <laughs> None of them thinking that I would be doing anything different. Like that was the thing I was going to do, right? And then found myself doing it in a different, unexpected sort of way. Um, so when it comes to that soul's purpose, I think that is, it is important to come back <laughs> <laughs> to feeling, to come back to how do I want to feel? What is going on in my life that feels misaligned? What feels like constant resistance? Where is my essence starting to dim maybe? And just making adjustments for it. But your soul's purpose, I think it's it's something you were born with and then you discover the container or the vessel, whatever. You discover the way you're going to use it throughout life. And I think that will change for you again and again and again, which is one of the other reasons why we feel folks might feel so lost. And what, what am I here for? What's my purpose? What's my soul's purpose? I just want to know, because I think there's this misconception that you'll find one thing that you do, and that's just what you do. And you change constantly. You every day you are changing. You're changing the way you think about something. You're changing a preference. Your body's changing. Your mind is changing. You are constantly changing. You're changing. We live in a changing world. And so the container will continuously shift. And I think that it's a, I think that a fault in the soul's purpose system <laughs> is looking for the thing that fills you up as opposed to who you are in delivering that to the world in some way, in some meaningful way. Um, and so, you know, look, using myself as the example, I mean, I've worked at, I've worked daycare, I've worked lots of retail, I worked for, I worked in sales and marketing for a big um, company in the US. I worked, I was a buyer for a company that made airplane seats. I was a teacher, I was in private practice education. <laughs> I've done lots of things. I tutored adult learners who were going back to school when I was in college. Like I've held, I was uh, the leader. I, when I was in high school, I would go to the elementary school and spend afternoons with kids whose parents were getting divorced and like be their mentor. Like, I've always done this idea of, again, people are in four walls and then I help them get out of the four walls, but it's looked so many different ways. And at the time, each one felt like they fit in different ways. And now though, I wouldn't want to do some of those things again. Um, and I see where I, where I, how I impacted those different roles and the people around me because of my ability to say, well, let's look at it from a different way. Uh, but it doesn't mean that any of those containers were wrong. And it doesn't mean that the sisters enchanted is like my one last soul's purpose. It's, uh, it's changing. It's always changing. We're always changing, but how I, what I feel the most fulfilled in my genius, uh, my soul's purpose just come, can come out in a lot of different ways. And when we open ourselves to the possibility that your soul's purpose can move through you in a lot of different ways, I think that we open ourselves up to, to being willing to try different things, try new sorts of experiences for ourselves. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, so just, I'm going to scroll back through some comments here. Uh, I see, um, lots of sharing here around what folks feel like their essence is, uh, how you're currently showing up in that way. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Ideas for the future. Love all of that. Uh, yeah, Debbie. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, no, I made the comments go away. Now here they are. <laughs> uh, Debbie, Michelle sharing astrology reading. And hello, Michelle. Uh, years ago, following my soul's purpose would change in X number of years, which is when I stopped consulting and started the rocks. Now I need to make the rocks into a proper container. Yeah. Um, so Michelle owns a company, the rock seller, like C E L L A R. So if you love crystals, go find Michelle on Instagram. Um, Michelle's legit, <laughs> legit, legit. Uh, and I think that's one of the ways we change too. You know, those of you who've been with the sisters enchanted for almost eight years that we've been doing this, um, you know, we've changed a lot in the way we do things, but it's because we learn, we grow, we understand what works, what doesn't, what's what's sustainable and what's not. And 
to think that you just find your thing and that's the one thing, uh, that's not the case. It doesn't stay that way, right? Because you change, you grow. Your purpose, your soul is still this like neutral thing that was born with, you have this genius coming from your unique soul, however you view the soul. I mean, we all can view it in a lot like different ways, depending on your beliefs, your background, whatever. Um, but it was born the way it was. And then you, your humanness grows and changes. And then your soul can come through in a different way as a result of the way you grow and you change in this world. Um, so astrology, uh, Michelle mentioned her astrology. And I didn't learn astrology. Well, I mean, I knew like the zodiac signs and working with the moon. But it was Anna and Nick, our astrology teachers who really like taught me astrology. And, um, and that was over the last, you know, years that they've been teaching it. And I remember when they were first learning astrology, um, well before the sisters and Janet even started. And Anna was saying, she had my birth chart and she was saying something about my houses. And I remember I just kept like making all these quippy comments about get out of my houses, <laughs> get out of my basement. <laughs> I didn't invite you into that house. Because it's like, this is, it sounds like too much for me. What are you talking about? Um, but if I look back at my life and I look at my birth chart, you will, you see in my birth chart, I have six or five planets in astrology in my sixth house. That is the, that's health and wellness, the house of service. So how are, how are you serving other people? Health and wellness. Like I have, a, I do have a great interest in health and wellness, but how do I help other people? And you can think health and wellness and think like, you know, bodies, but it's also your mind. Like, how are you healthy and well in your soul, in your mind? I'm a cancer rising. That's nurturing. That's mother energy. I have a Pisces midheaven. That's bringing the collective together. That's opposite. That's like you think of Pisces and the fish swimming in opposite directions. And that's rational world with the ethereal world, like swimming through each other and past each other. Like what's, what's up here in our imaginations and what do we actually have to live in down here in the world? Like that's exactly what I do for work, but I got here before I even knew any of that. <laughs> and so when I look back though, at my life and I consider this idea of soul's purpose, I mean, my, who I am at my core is written in the stars. The stars though, don't tell me that I'm going to do that through mentoring, or am I going to do that through running a business? Or am I going to do that through teaching? Am I going to do that through, um, you know, like whatever roads, avenues I've taken to do that, I can see how I've done it and everything I've done, but I didn't know that either. So we can use tools. We can ask ourselves again, this question I started us with, how do you want to feel? Um, knowing how you want to feel and then understanding why you don't already feel that way. Why do you desire to feel that way? Like what's making you think that that's the way you want to feel or need to feel. So we can use this depth inquiry and we can use tarot to help ask these questions. We can look at astrology. Uh, and then in your looking for your soul's purpose, this is where shadow work comes in because we can really find, um, like for me, for example, this service of others, these reality versus what's happening here. You know, I can get really, uh, if I get onto a topic where I'm like, oh my gosh, here's the like facts and the reality, but then here's what's possible. And like, here's the data, but here's what my humanitarian heart is saying. Oh my gosh, I can have a like double, very Gemini, even though I don't really have a, well, my Chiron's in Gemini anyway, but I can start to have these conversations with myself, <laughs> but I think it's more of the Pisces. Like what, what do I want to get into versus what am I seeing in front of me? Um, and I can do that very, very quickly with health and wellness and my Sagittarius. I'm very optimistic. I will, I, I'm very like a risk taker. I will put myself out there to serve others. But the shadow side of that is that I can overindulge. Um, I'm a person who, you know, alcohol is one of those things. I have to, in my younger years, I mean, I'm lucky I'm alive from some of the situations I put myself in with drinking. And as an adult, I am aware of it. Like I will, if I have a glass of wine, um, like I have a glass of wine with my grandma when I have dinner with her, I, it's like, I can feel it in my body. And, and now that I have an awareness of it that I didn't used to have, it's like, I know it. And I can, and I look at my birth chart and my birth chart literally says <laughs> like gluttony, overindulgence, too much risk taking, too much fun having. If you're in the shadow and you start to like dive in, like, oh, I want more of this feeling. And so if I'm chasing my soul's purpose and I'm chasing it based on these, 
one end of the spectrum, emotional things that make me feel good in a moment, like that's where I got to come back to neutral. And I got to say, like, what feels expansive, not what feels good in the moment or what's going to leave me reeling afterwards. Yes, <laughs> quite the party girl. <laughs> oh, if y'all knew me in my early 20s, you would be like, Sarah seems like a different Sarah than I know now. <laughs> Same Sarah, <laughs> different thought process. <laughs> Same Sarah, different thoughts. Um, but all of this can help you be tools, though, to know, like, what is my what is it for me? What is that thing? What is that thing? And sometimes trying so hard to discover your soul's purpose, I think will just bring up lots of resistance for you. And it really is one of those feelings based, you know, what is the magic I was born with? And then how can I explore different containers for it in my life. And also knowing too, I think changing your expectations to understand that you're going to do plenty of things in your lifetime that are not on your soul's purpose. Plenty of them. <laughs> Whether it's because of circumstance, it's a learning lesson, it's a, uh, you know, because you have to, uh, whatever those things are, you're going to, you're going to have plenty of those experiences because of the world that we were all born into. There's certain things we just have to do. And, uh, uh, and seeing those for what they are and adjusting your expectation around them too. Like some things are the things you have to do to keep the road underneath your feet, you know, and then you just, you look for the soul's purpose opportunities on that journey and figure out how you can get closer and closer and closer to them, closer to them. All right, let's, let's see here what do we got going on. Some of these comments here. Um, I see some things I like, things that you'd like to do more of. I love that you're all sharing here in the comments too and having this discussion with each other. I think it's helpful for other people to see that um, you other people are in those same, same shoes. Oh my gosh, the alcohol thing. I could do a whole chat on that. Maybe I will. Oh, well, just my relationship with alcohol. Firstly, I, my alcoholism runs in my family. And then the folks who aren't what you might call an alcoholic, I would say are definitely, definitely glorify alcohol, being able to drink a lot of alcohol and have an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. And that wasn't something that I've realized. I mean, maybe my late twenties that I, that like dawned on me. I was like, wait a second, not everyone's like this. <laughs> and that took some, some changing and then I don't, I'm not, I do drink alcohol. I won't say I don't, but I'm not a daily drinker. So I have a glass of wine when I have dinner with my grandmother, which is once a week. And then probably once like every, I don't know, two weeks in between there, my, like at dinner, my husband will make like, I don't know, like cocktails or something. I'll have one of those. But I, since I drink such so much less, and I think my hormones have been changing a lot recently and like my body's doing all that beautiful fluctuating it starts to do if I drink even one glass of wine like I don't sleep well I'm having hot flashes I wake up parched and dead <laughs> to the myself anyway <laughs> and it's just like ah, what have you done to me Sarah so it's interesting how I'm experiencing that so much differently but that's just my experience you know I'm not speaking for anyone else just sharing that that is my experience um, Michelle shared, love the idea of containers. Yeah, because you can almost change anything you're doing in a proper container. Yes, look for the containers. What do we need to change about that? Um, yeah, let's see here. Yes, alcoholism runs in my family, which is alcoholism with a side of pill popping <laughs> to go with it. <laughs> so I got to really like mind my mind, my mind when uh, I'm feeling the pull to something to take me out of my emotional experience. But that's just my, that's my experience. And again, I also have that over, I've got all that, my shadow of my Sagittarius and that sixth house is over drinking, overeating, overindulging, um, and getting lost in that. So uh, for me, I, per, for my personal experience, I take that very, you know, when I start to feel like, what can I do to not be in me? That's when I get more in me for me. And I ask myself, like, what, what can I, what can I do here? 
Um, yeah, Michelle just wake up with a headache. Yeah, one glass of wine. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I get, <laughs> I get, it's like hot flashes. I got, my husband's got to change the sheets <laughs> from the sweat. <laughs> like it's just one glass of wine. <laughs> I thought at least. <laughs> anyway, anyway, those, that's just my experience on that topic. Um, but definitely had to learn that overindulgence and what it did for me also uh, to um, bring my, like, just come back to me to bring that, that clarity, clarity to my, to my life as well. All right. Totally went on a side tangent there. We started on planning for the week ahead. Uh, it's cliche. It's so cliche to say this and it's probably really annoying, but if you don't, if you don't plan, right, you plan to fail, not planning is planning to fail. I don't know <laughs> what that's the, what that cliche thing is, but really um, start from how do I want to feel? Look at your week ahead. Does your week look like the way you want to feel? If not, what needs to be adjusted? Do you have to adjust your expectation? Do you need to adjust what's on the calendar? Like, what do you got to do from there? And then after that, we talked about soul's purpose. And I challenged you to consider that your soul's purpose is more of an essence. It's more of an ethereal thing. And it's not a, this is what I'm meant to do with my life specific answer. It's not like flashing signs that are going to say, this is it. It's your soul's purpose. It's your, um, it's more your essence. It's your ethereal self. It's your, it's your unique magic, but the container for that can look different. Um, they can look, the container can change over your lifetime. And when you're open to accepting that, I think that's when you will naturally, more naturally find yourself um, falling into things that feel aligned for you because you're open to looking for the opportunities as opposed to trying to find the right thing and ultimately sabotaging yourself along the way. I went through a whole list of reasons why I think it's challenging for people to open themselves up to this. So you'll want to listen back if you came in later. Um, but yeah, good, some good things for the Aquarius energy of the lunar cycle. It feels like a very Aquarian topic here. Um, let's see here. Uh, just checking back in some comments here. <laughs> Jennifer's asking like this, this, the switch for you. I don't know, Jennifer, you gotta check that out, out for yourself. Um, and listen, I'm not, no judgments on whatever anybody does with your time, your body, your life. I'm just sharing my experience, <laughs> my experience. I get the same, like the sweatiness. If I, I'm just in the night sweats, alcohol does it to me 110%. But if I eat too much, um, like, like if I eat a lot of cheese, <laughs> it's so gross, like cheese and crackers. If I eat like tons of that too late in the day, it's the same thing. I wake up just like, everything feels hot and sweaty and bloated. And like my body is like full rejection. I cannot have cheese and crackers after like 2 p.m. <laughs> so it's happening to me in a multiple, multi myriad of ways. Luckily, coffee is not one of those as of yet. Then we're going to have some really, we're going to have some bridges to cross at that point. <laughs> bridges to cross. All right. Thank you all for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. If you are for communities, things that are going on, Astrology Fundamentals is still happening for our Holistic Witchery students, our Astrology students. So you can check in over there. Anna and Nick and Kelly and Kiera are, are teaching classes, office hours, all sorts of things all week long. If you're in there, if you're in Magical Self-Care, we have kicked off our February 9th round of Magical Self-Care. Get over in the community group and participate in the comments over there. Next week, you've got a, a rose quartz healing situation happening with Kelly. Um, what else is going on in the Enchanted Journey membership? Anna's host uh, taking you through the confidence cure. If you want, that's optional. You can participate or not. And I think that covers the live classes and whatnot that are happening right now. Um, remember, we do two podcast blog posts every week if you want to check them out. And that is it. If you've got questions, I see some um, real quick, I'll do these two admin questions I see 
here. Uh, oh, Beth, another Born Magic book club. It's on the agenda to restart that um, probably with magical self-care sometime this year. Uh, it won't be this if it, it wouldn't be in this part of the year, though. So it would be a little bit out. Uh, astrology fundamentals. If you're in that if you're in that class, you need help finding it. Uh, totally tag um, Anna or Jenna in a community group or reply to any of the emails we give you. And they'll give you all of the directions with the screenshots and whatnot to find any of your course material. So Jenna's got PDFs and screenshots and directions uh, galore to send. So if you're, if you feel like you're missing something, can't find something that we're saying, and you're like, I logged in, I logged out, I went to places, just reply to any email and Jenna will help you find where you need to be more efficiently than I can on here right now. All right. Yeah. And happy early Valentine's day to everybody. All right. I will see y'all around. Have a great week ahead. Bye.